When I was a freshman in high school, my family moved around a lot, and I had trouble making friends. It didn't help that my appearance didn't really fit the cool image at the time. Cool kids had skateboards, put gel in their hair, bought pizza and soda for lunch. I had braces, bagged lunches, a nerdy haircut, and rollerblades. Let's make one thing clear right now. As far as the rest of the world is concerned, rollerblading is not cool. But I love it anyway. <laughs> but I learned very quickly back then that bladers can't be choosers. It seemed like everybody else hated it. Skateboarders thought it was gay. Girls thought it was gay. <laughs> Cops thought the grinding was vandalism. Property owners thought us breaking into schools was trespassing. And parents thought it was a waste of time. So one day, when I got invited by some kids from school who rollerbladed, no, cooler than me, but still not that cool. <laughs> to, go <laughs> to go street skating, I jumped at the chance. That's how I found myself anxiously hopping into the back of a truck and being driven from the Poway suburbs toward Mira Mesa by a guy who only had a learner's permit. <laughs> this guy was Stuart. He was oddly shaped, tall and chubby at the same time, and seemed like he would be more comfortable with video games than rollerblades. He didn't normally hang out with these guys either, but since he could use his dad's truck, it was decided he would drive us. Since I was also the odd man out in the group, I wanted to get to know him, but he was too busy focusing on driving and looking scared out of his wits. <laughs> so what do we do if we get caught? Like, cops or something? Stuart asked the rest of the car. Don't worry, said a cool kid named Bill. I've been caught by the cops a bunch. They usually just make you leave with a warning. Just make sure you don't have any weed on you. <laughs> oh, okay, Stuart said. This would not end well. <laughs> it was around noon when we arrived at the first spot, a middle school in Mira Mesa called Wagenheim. Because we were blocked off from the view of the street, we didn't have to worry about cops seeing us. We climbed straight up over the fence and past the line of no trespassing signs and saw there were some local kids already rollerblading at the school. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> One of them was a Filipino guy with spiky hair who was also named Matt, who I had met before. He introduced himself to my friends, offered them cigarettes, told a few jokes. He was one of those guys who would give you the blades off his feet if you asked him. <laughs> In fact, he offered me one of his middle wheels when mine was broken the previous week. <laughs> he introduced me to his four other friends. Their response was, hey. <laughs> And they nodded. This school had a bunch of handicap handrails, which we would jump on and grind down in weird foot positions. When a jump was attempted, the skates would clang on the metal while that kid ended up splayed on top of the bars. <laughs> Stuart, in particular, fell down a lot. Soon it became apparent that at least half of us didn't have the balls to jump onto handrails, or did, but injured them in the process. <laughs> So it was decided to go down the street to skate some ledges in an open park. But seriously, that's the first Google image you find when you look up this park. <laughs> Not good tourist dollars, okay. Without the high fences of the school to guard us, we were left vulnerable to any patrol car on safari. A large group teep... Uh, ugh. A large group of teen boys on rollerblades crossing the streets of Mira Mesa wasn't exactly inconspicuous either. <laughs> But after a few minutes, I, I relaxed. Our group settled in, the cooler guys hung back in a shady area and smoked, not just cigarettes, while the others marked up a ledge from grinding with the plastic skates. Suddenly, I heard a commotion behind me. A rent-a-cop had rolled up in a golf cart. <laughs> By the time I saw it, he was in a shouting match with a member of our group. Even at a distance, it was obvious to tell that this red-faced police reject was hopping mad. So mad, in fact, 
that he had already called the real cops. As if on cue, two patrol cars skidded to a stop behind him, kicking up a cloud of dust. I could tell from their bulletproof vests that they meant business. <laughs> One of them ran out and grabbed the handle of the passenger side facing us. What was he doing? I squinted in confusion, only to find out one horrifying second later, he released a fucking police dog. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that happened next was a blur. I saw the triangular head of the big German shepherd as the crop pried the door open, still attached to a leash but clawing at the seat to get to us. We went with the most primal response we had. Flight. I took off like a bat out of hell toward the street. I could hear the rapid fire click, click, clicking of the dog's nails on the concrete behind me and feel his vicious, booming barks. I heard yelling behind me, but I couldn't look back. I was skating on adrenaline. <laughs> We tore across the street toward a neighborhood, feet pumping urethane against the hot asphalt. We must have skated five or six blocks away before someone ducked down an alleyway, leading the rest of the pack into hiding. A patrol car flew down the street two minutes later with its siren blaring. I collapsed, my lungs pressing up against my rib cage like they were about to burst. We escaped. Once the adrenaline started to wear off and we were able to breathe, we took a head count of everybody. There were five here, including me and Bill. What the fuck were they thinking with that fucking dog? <laughs> we were robbing a fucking bank, Bill ranted. <laughs> then we realized the one person who was missing, Stuart. <laughs> oh no, I thought of all the people for the dog to get. <laughs> well, that's a bummer, Bill said, lighting up a cigarette to calm down. I guess we should go back and see what happened. He's my ride home and I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> we went to see the aftermath from the opposite side of the street. The patrol cars were now in front of the park with aviator-clad officers milling about. Then, I saw the sorry shape of Stuart, sitting on a curb with his face buried in his hands. I felt a sharp pang of sympathy in my gut. I felt like I had betrayed this guy, like he was a soldier left on behind on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> the guys who I thought were cool were here laughing at him, even though he took the fall for our bullshit. They could care less about what happened to the guy who had been driving them around everywhere, a guy who was supposed to be their friend. To add the ultimate insult to injury, Stuart's mother rolled up on the scene in a minivan just as they were standing him up and cuffing him. She flew out of the car with arms waving around like she was bringing a plane onto the tarmac. The cops tried to offer sympathy to her with their hands planted on their tasers. A short time later, a tow truck appeared to take Stewart's dad's truck to the impound. My friend, probably not anymore, was having the worst day of his life. With no other options, Matt was kind enough to borrow his mom's car and drop us off at our respective houses. I was mostly silent. I felt guilt, shame, fear, and anger boiling together inside of me. Stewart may not have been the coolest kid on the block, but he, was, he still seemed like a nice guy. His only fault was that he wasn't as fast as the rest of us. <laughs> but these guys, who we both tried so hard to look cool for, ditched him as soon as things got tough. I never saw Stewart again after that. From what I heard, he had been let off with a warning at the police station, but because of the impounded truck, his parents grounded him for almost a year. I sat back and reflected on what had happened. So this is what being a cool kid was? Ditching the people who depended on you and worrying only about yourself? I decided at that moment that popularity was not for me. So I didn't get invited to any more cool kid rollerblading sessions. <laughs> but I didn't care about that. Rollerblading wasn't cool anyway, so why try? <laughs> I made new friends. And although they didn't smoke weed or were popular at school, they were good friends to me. 
And I still had rollerblading because I loved it anyway.